OpenAI's deep research has quickly become one of my favorite AI tools. In a previous video, I looked at its performance when researching the endpoint security market, and I came away very impressed with the structured analysis and output that it produced. Now, even though it was very powerful, I found there were a few limitations when using deep research. Uh, number one is I had to use it directly from the chat GPT interface. Now, this isn't necessarily a problem for everyone, but I find that I often want to uh, take the output of my queries and process them and integrate them with my own custom applications. Uh, secondly, these reports take a long time to run. So when you kick off an agent, it might take 30 minutes. It might take an hour. How do you know when that report is actually done? Maybe you go take a coffee break and then you come back and you check, is it done yet? Is it done yet? Where's my output? Uh, the third thing it was limited by is that it would search the web for research. But um, in my case, sometimes I have some private documents or some newsletters or other pieces of information that I want to search. And it would be nice to take all this power in this deep research agent and be able to apply it to my own internal private knowledge base, uh, not just publicly accessible information. The good news is, is there's a few new features uh, that OpenAI released that help with all of this. Uh, so first they've released the deep research model and the deep research API, meaning that you can programmatically call uh, OpenAI's deep research. You can either call the O3 deep research model or the O4 mini deep research model, and you can give it access to tools like web search and it will get kicked off and you can kick it off in the background um, and it will perform uh, its deep research and get all that output for you. Secondly, there's now support for uh, webhooks meaning that when that deep research job finishes, uh, you can have OpenAI call you back and post back to your application, and then you can take those uh, the report results there and you can process it, run any custom Python code in your own endpoint. This is a Flask uh, web app endpoint right here. You can authenticate it to make sure uh, that request came from OpenAI, and then you can process it and perform whatever other tasks you want on it. So since it's a Python program, you might want to store it in the database, you might want to extract some structured output from this report, you might want to send yourself an email, whatever type of logic you can think of, you can add your own custom processing uh, right here. The third piece they added is support for MCP servers, meaning uh, you can add additional tools. For instance, I have some internal documents. Let's say I'm a subscriber to Stratechery Plus here, and there's tons of great analysis provided by Ben Thompson here, and I want to uh, add this to my deep research. It's a quality publication, and I want to add it to my deep research report and have a deep research uh, cite this internal documentation. So as an example of this, I may want to programmatically ingest my Stratechery subscription via their private RSS feed and feed it into a vector store in OpenAI. And then I can use OpenAI's example MCP server to expose this vector store for search and retrieval to the OpenAI deep research agent. In order to show you all this functionality working end to end, I've created my own web application here for my firm part-time research where you can see all of this functionality coming together in a full stack web application. I've also prepared a write-up complete with code examples on my website at hackingthemarkets.com, link down below, and you can sign up for my email list and you can see all the code that was used to build this. So the first thing I wanna do is to discuss all the features of this application and give you a brief demonstration, and then I'll go in depth on how I actually built it. So the first thing it provides is a UI for managing deep research prompts. And so what I have here is an admin area right here and manage prompts. And you see, you see this is a simple web interface and there's a few companies I'm interested in exploring. I'm interested in Cloudflare and new AI features like Cloudflare workers, Cloudflare containers, things like that, and how uh, this AI inference opportunity uh, will play out for Cloudflare. I want uh, OpenAI to go out there and find me all the latest information and put it together in, in this nice report so that I can understand uh, these new products better. Uh, secondly, I'm interested in Meta's AI strategy. So you've heard they're like hiring a bunch of people and spending hundreds of millions, millions of dollars uh, on talent, and they're going to be you know building agents to automate their advertising business, things like that. I want to know how that's going to impact Meta. And then third, I'm interested in ServiceNow and things like uh, IT management, ticketing, and things like that. And so I've created all these prompts. And you see, I can edit any one of them right here. And so I'm just, I'm giving a few fields for uh, a topic, uh, a prompt here, and then I'm choosing a model that I want to use uh, to run this, right? And so I have this basic prompt manager right here, and then I can add a new one. And all this is stored in a SQLite database. 
You'll also notice there's a run button here. So let's say I want to test one of these prompts. I can click run and that'll kick off one of these deep research tests. Now on this one, I use GPT-40 mini just because I wanted to do a quick test and make sure it can successfully call back to one of my webhooks. So now that I kicked off that API request, where did it actually go? How do I get my research? Well, if you go over here to my server console here, you see there's eventually a post back to a webhook endpoint. And so that's OpenAI calling me back with my research, and then I can run my own code and process it. You'll see it says I extracted some information from that report. And it also says email sent successfully to parttimelarry at gmail.com. If I look in my research dashboard here and refresh it, you'll see that I have this report that came back and I can view it right here on the web with my own little logo, part-time research right there. And that'll be my report. And I can also download it in PDF format. And that's thanks to my uh, custom code. You'll also see that I have an email over here, a part-time research report, just like that with my logo and my detailed report. And if you wanna see a more detailed one, that one was just an O4 mini just to test uh, my results. But you see one for Meta Platform, since I use an actual deep research model, it's actually more uh, comprehensive. And then down here, you see I have an email attachment if they wanna read it in PDF format, you know, print it, has your nice logo, you could sexy this up and brand it. That way you can charge your clients, you know, exorbitant fees, 2% of their money and things like that for your detailed research and analysis. The other thing I have here is a recent research feed here, so you can see what's incoming, what recently became available. And the other nice thing about prompt management here is, is not only can I kick off a report on demand, I can also add a user setting. And so I could say, you know, 8 a.m. every Monday, I want this report to show me everything that happened with Cloudflare over the past week, and I can look at it and be caught up with everything without having to read every single article every single day. I'll also demonstrate a few utility scripts for our MCP server. The first is called Parse Stratechery that just goes through and grabs all the Stratechery articles and save them, saves them in a directory uh, in Markdown format. So you can see all these interviews uh, and articles that have been written in recent uh, months. I'll also create a vector store. So I'll actually create an OpenAI vector store, go through the articles directory and load them all up into the, uh, the OpenAI vector store. We'll then spin up an MCP server that serves up this vector store and adds it as a tool so that OpenAI's deep research can actually use it. We'll also create a few testing scripts that we can use to make sure everything's working, all the different pieces. So we'll make sure we can successfully search the vector store and that it can uh, successfully return relevant documents. We'll also create a webhook tester here so that we can create kick off a quick uh, task and make sure our webhook is correctly working. We'll also test that Deep Research can successfully use our MCP server. So I have this test internal file lookup tool to make sure it can actually access the Stratechery articles and cite them. And in doing so, we'll also look at the logs that are in the OpenAI platform. And so I can look at a request and see what actually happened, uh, how many tokens were used, and how much does this actually uh, cost? You'll see here in the OpenAI logs, I can actually look and see what MCP tools it's calling. So you see it's calling internal file lookup. You can see recent traces, and you can also see the final output of the report. And you can see this is correctly citing the documents that are in the document store. So you can see this is citing Meta plus Scale AI, Meta's Reset AI is sustaining innovation, which is not actually publicly available on the web. We were able to load this data from our subscription into the OpenAI vector store, and the Deep Research API is successfully using it. So that's it for the application overview and the various use cases we'll be exploring. In the next video, I'll get started with actually coding the application, starting with the very basics. And we're gonna go through component by component, building this application up, starting with the deep research API and just making a basic uh, API call, kicking it off in the background. And then I'll go over webhooks and how to actually uh, get a call back whenever this deep research uh, finishes and processing that webhook, setting up your own local server, things like that. So that's it for now. See you in the next video. Thanks, bye.